So we've just picked up the passes and now we are ready to head inside CERN. So we're at the main bit and it is beautiful. Look, the backdrop is mountains. Hello, we are currently just arrived at CERN. It is about nine in the morning and so we're gonna start our day with jam packed full of tours and exhibitions and we're gonna be looking at where the protons get accelerated, which will be really cool, and hopefully look at antimatter stuff, which I'm really looking forward to. I have no idea what it's about, but um, yeah, it should be fun. So as we know, CERN's main goal is studying nuclear and particle physics. Well, one of the largest questions we have in particle physics at the moment is just exactly what antimatter is and what it is for. Because the entire world is made of matter, but according to the laws of physics and nature, matter should be produced in equal parts matter and antimatter, but we don't really see where the antimatter is gone. To answer this question, CERN has built an antimatter factory to produce antimatter and to study it. So today we'll be having a look at what exactly the antimatter factory is, what antimatter actually is, and what they do with it in this factory. So yeah, let's go ahead. What exactly is antimatter? Well, in the briefest terms possible, antimatter really is just the mirror opposite of matter. What does that mean? Well, imagine if you have like a number line, so you have negative numbers on the left, zero in the middle, and positive numbers on the right. Imagine that. And you take the number zero, and you hit it really hard with a hammer. When you hit the number zero really hard with a hammer, it produces two numbers, a plus two and a minus two. So what that basically means, if you have nothing and you hit it with enough energy, you get a positive number and a negative number. Well, we can consider the positive part, the positive number as being normal matter and the negative part as antimatter. So you can exactly see from this analogy that normal matter and antimatter are basically equal and they're very similar to each other, except that antimatter has the opposite charge of normal matter. When we take a look at real life physics, if we take a look at a hydrogen atom, for example, which is the smallest block of matter that we can actually do stuff with, a hydrogen atom is made of one proton in the middle, as well as one electron in the middle, where that one proton is positively charged and the electron is negatively charged and spinning around it. Whereas antimatter, or anti-hydrogen, is made of one anti-proton, which has a negative charge in the middle, and one anti-electron spinning around it, which is one positively charged anti-electron. So that's what antimatter is, and why do we need to care about it? Well, because from the analogy, we saw that if you broke up the zero, we're supposed to have equal parts matter and equal parts antimatter. Meaning that the universe should have produced equal parts matter and equal parts antimatter. But that is exactly not what we see because we are all here and the universe as we know it is made of matter. I am made of matter, the camera you're looking at is made of matter. So where is all the antimatter gone? Where did it go? That's something that we don't actually know, and that is what we're, we as scientists at CERN are trying to figure out right now. There's actually three ways that we want to figure out how antimatter is, uh, where the antimatter is gone. There's three ways to do it. One is to look at the antiparticles and see if the different, and we look at antiparticles and see if they are different than normal particles. That is done in the LETB experiment, which we saw yesterday. Another thing is to try and find the antimatter directly out in space. So for example, in space stations above Earth, there is detectors that are specifically designed to look for antimatter in outer space at the moment. Another thing that we can do, which is what we do in this factory, is to directly produce antimatter and play with it and see if they have different properties than matter. So for example, if they fall in the same way as normal matter or if they do something else. So this is exactly why we have the antimatter factory. This entire factory is specifically designed to build antimatter and to harness it so that other experiments can use it to test if there's any difference between normal matter and antimatter. We have these things which are called personal dosimeters. Well, a personal dosimeter is given to every single 
member, certain member of personnel who wants to work in a radiation area, such as in the antimatter factory. What this is, is it passively measures how much radiation we as people get. The way it works is actually quite interesting. If you see in the dosimeter itself, there's a golden film here. And this functions almost exactly in the same way as a film camera does. In that it's basically a film that's exposed to the environment, but instead of taking pictures of light, it takes pictures of the amount of radiation we get. And if you know exactly how well this film is developed, that shows you exactly how much radiation you've been exposed to. We call this a personal dosimeter, and this is a passive one because even though it's recording how much radiation we get at the moment, it's not telling us how much radiation I get right now. So you can't see it right now. So what you have to do is, if you wanna see how much radiation you got, you need to use a box like this, which is a dosimeter reader. And this device reads the information on this uh, machine and tells us how much radiation we got. And the way you do that is by inserting this dosimeter in there. It's gonna read out my name and it's going to be reading out how much radiation there is. It's gonna send it to central command and tell me that there's exactly zero radiation I have. Meaning that in the four, I believe, months I've been at CERN working in the antimatter factory going underground in LACB and Atlas, I still have zero radiation on me, which means that CERN is incredibly safe. Once the antiprotons are slow enough, they are diverted into the smaller ring, which we call LNA, or the extra low energy um, antimatter ring. And that takes the slowish antiprotons from the antimatter decelerator and makes it actually slow enough that they can do stuff with it. And once the antiprotons are slow enough, they can then be diverted into all the other experiments, like the GBAR experiment on the bottom left or the other experiments on the top right, which we'll be seeing in a bit. Now we're currently in front of the LEAR building, which stands for the Low Energy Ion Ring. This building also housed the LINAC, which is the Linear Accelerator. And this building here is basically where the protons start their journey into the LHC, where they're finally being collided. So today we're going to be learning about how the protons start the journey, as well as how the ions start this journey, as well as taking a closer look at how the protons actually work inside the accelerator complex of CERN. And finally, we're going to be looking at the linear, the, the low energy ion ring itself and on its whole. So the protons start generally in a hydrogen bottle. That hydrogen bottle actually contains enough hydrogen to supply the LHC for like 10 years or so. But 
the hydrogens are stolen from the hydrogen bottles and they get into a little cavity here where the hydrogens are stripped off of the electrons and now they are just a bunch of protons. The protons are then siphoned into this radio frequency cavity which accelerates the protons from stationary quickly along in the linear path and you can see the path that it actually follows if you look across in this beam here where it's all covered by magnets. So this is the first experiment ever done at CERN and it smashed to, uh, particles together and since then, 70 years later, they are still smashing particles together to see, more, learn more about our universe. And it's just crazy to think that so much science has happened since this first experiment. Um, so yeah, there you go.